strategy, search engine optimization. And one of the things we want to look at there is how to get on the search engine result page or SERP, which is the term you'd hear most often. Generally speaking, you might have ads on top. Um, my ad is sitting right there on top, but um, the organic result down here towards the bottom after the maps is where you want to be too, because it's free. And the more customers you can get for free from uh, being on the top of the search engine, the better. So let's take a look at some ideas around that. We've talked about the value position and I offered a Mad Lib formula um, that you can use there on the left. And here's in the middle, we have a uh, sample value proposition that Tesla um, has on their website. I'm not so sure I like the Tesla, Tesla value position. It's a little long, a little wordy, but it is a good example of what they see as their value position in the marketplace. That then can lead to keyword focuses on the electric cars, the solar panels, and the integrated renewable energy solutions, right? So those are the kind of things that can lead us to keywords to focus on on our site. But what about content? When I look at places like Rusty's Pizza here and I try to analyze it for them and decide with them like what the keyword phrases they should search for would look like, I notice that they only have one word that says pizza anywhere on the site. Everything else is either in an image or it talks about other things like fast and friendly service or media ordering online, etc. They really need to have the word pizza in there more often. So if you need to need to rank high for pizza, you need to have that word on your site a lot. So that's one thing we want to look for when we're working on search engine optimization. Here with Marketo, they work on customer relation management and the word customer is everywhere. Um, it shows up multiple times on their homepage. So that's the kind of thing we're looking for and want. Tesla, the prior example, mainly uses images on their site. They're really lucky because their brand is the 500 pound gorilla in the room. They don't need to worry about it too much. But if I were going to improve their site, I would use more words and use more words that are keyword phrases. We can look at the following thing when we're trying to figure out what keywords to use. Search demand, what is it, what's the volume? What's the monthly volume of search searches for a specific phrase or keyword on Google? Um, we can find that out through a couple tools. We're gonna go over that in a little bit. We might wanna also look at geographic location. Do, am I just serving Santa Barbara? Well, I don't need to focus on keywords that have to do with San Luis Obispo, right? The value of the keyword might also be important. I know that Santa Barbara Notary is my most important keyword phrase for my notary business, for instance. So I wanna spend more time on it, use it more often on my site. And then analytics can show me which ones are working well and which ones aren't, and I can prioritize from there. This is a concept here called the long tail. Most searches on the internet are on the left with what um, is called the fat head and the chunky middle. These are the common generic search terms. You know, when you're looking for pepperoni pizza rather than Rusty's pizza delivery, Rusty's pizza delivery is more towards the long tail. It's more specific. And that's um, really where they want to focus their phrases because there's too much competition on the left with all those searches for pizza parlors that may not even be in Santa Barbara. So I would suggest that they'd go for that long tail. Another good example of the long tail is I own an antique uh, first edition book from the 20s on California wildflowers. It's worth $500 and I have a web page for it. Not many people are going to search for it. I might only get a dozen a month, but if I make 500 bucks on the book, those are the keyword phrases I want, you know, California wildlife wildflower book, you know, or I don't know what it would be, but the title of the book would be what I'd use. And that search term won't get a lot of volume, but it would make me a lot of money. Let's take a look a little bit on tactics. Um, meta tags um, are something that's in the code level of websites and you can put in the keywords you like. They're not as important today, but I still think it's a good idea. They also can give us a guide for what we put in our content. The meta description in the code is really important because it tells Google what to say about your company. So you come up with like a 240 character, I believe it is, just a couple sentences on what your company is and you put it in the meta description. Um, in WordPress, it's really easy. In Squarespace, it's really easy to do this because they have places for this. Um, and uh, it's in the HTML code. Um, value position, again, it would be a key way to find 
um, keywords. Uh, we can use Google Search Console. If you own a website, you've probably gotten an email from Google to hook up on this. It tells you exactly what people are using to get to your website and what kind of traffic you're having. This is a great way to prioritize the content on your site and the phrases that you use. I also use Google Ads Keyword Planner. Um, when I use Google Ads, there's a tool in there where I can put in something like restaurant. I put the honeybeekitchen.com. I don't think they're around right now, but they were a really good um, plant-based restaurant. And I did a category of organic and natural foods. I can target it to just Santa Barbara here instead of the United States, just English, or I can include Spanish just using Google. I can even use negative keywords like uh, restaurant, not food truck, right? I can tell Google what I'm looking for. And then the result is a list of words and what the search volume is. The Google Ads Keyword Planner is great. You do have to have an account on Google Ads in order to use it. Um, I'm not sure if you have to actually be buying ads in order to use it, so maybe you can sign up for it and try it. But it provides search volume um, and allows you to look at broad matches versus specific ones or long tails. And um, what I'd suggest too is there are other tools out there like SEM Rush and um, Keyword.io, Word Tracker, that you can look up the volume of keywords. They might be pretty um, non specific depending on the keyword phrases you're testing, but it's a good idea to check those and see um, which ones to prioritize. Another easy way to do it is just what the auto suggest is. So when I put in electric car, for instance, I see what people have been searching for and I could use those in the content on my website. I have a plugin here where it, whenever I go to Google and do a search for something, it shows me what searches are here too, and I can export it to CSV. This is kind of a cool plugin, which is available in Chrome. Google Trends is another really useful tool where I can see what people are talking about and get the keyword search phrase ideas by putting in electric cars and seeing what people write about it. So below that um, graph, you can see best electric cars 2021 is the top one probably. The Tesla Cybertruck at this time was a big topic um, because they tried to break the window and it did. <laughs> but uh, this is a really good tool in terms of um, finding it. It's really easy, just trends.google.com. And then backlinks finally is another good way to look at it. I can put my website in quotes in the uh, search bar and then I get everything that links to my website. And this is good. It shows the links on my site that show up, but it also shows where other people might be linking to me. And that's a really useful tool to kind of decide what to uh, focus on and maybe where to advertise as well. There are some technical factors with SEO. We can be careful about how we name things, right? Credit card processing um, straight from the .com right afterwards is much better than having folder X, folder Y, and then credit cards, and then another folder, and then processing, right? So it's the closer you are to the root in the URL name is better. Using meta tags, like in the HTML, like I said. Looking at keyword density, how often do your keywords show up? They should show up a good amount, but you don't want to overdo it. And then there is also a technical factor where when you roll over an image, you can get um, the name of the image and you can put the keyword phrases in there. As long as it still represents the image, you could do that. And here's some examples. Here's some code where we have the description and keywords. Here's a way that you can put the page name in there and use the keyword for the page name. And the description here shows up right there, right? And here's another way to use links to highlight contact a mobile notary now as a phrase. So these all work really well. And then finally, you want to be on Google Business. It's an app you can get at the App Store. It's part of your uh, Google account. You might make a business account just with a Google account just for your business. And you can control what they're saying about you and accept reviews on the internet. That's for another class, but that is an important thing to do for SEO as well, because then they know where you are.